My name is Jim Armagas, and I'm with Nimble. I'm your SAP security team lead and guru. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about user IDs and the differences in user types. I'm going to go ahead and get logged in here, and I will show you the two different types of users, I'm sorry, three different types of users that you are able to work with in the system. We'll go into SU01. The first thing we're going to do is create a test ID. I'm just going to show you some test IDs and how they interact within the system. I've already created these IDs before and I've deleted them. But we have several different user types. We have a dialog, a system ID, communications data ID, or a service ID. The reference user is rarely used. I'm not going to talk about that today. If you do have any questions about that, please feel free to go ahead and send me an email. In this case, we're going to go ahead and set an initial password, INITPASS. Do that twice. And again, we're going to have our dialog ID set up. This dialog ID is really an individual system access ID. This allows a user to log into the system and interact with it. Uh, it's possible to log on using the SAP GUI, and the user is uh, capable of interaction through that GUI. Uh, the system checks whether the password has expired or it's an initial password. If it's an initial password, the system automatically forces the user to change that password upon their initial login. And I'll show you that right here. So if we log in, test1, I-N-I-T-P-A-S-S, -S, you'll see here it pops up another window asking for a brand new password. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up a brand new password here. It'll bring up a copyright splash screen. We'll go ahead and enter through that. And you'll see that the user is actually able to interact with the system by typing in and being able to work within the system itself. So that's a typical dialog user ID. And so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is a system ID. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll create a system ID. As you can see, I've already created some of these users. We're going to go back into the Logon Data tab and set this user to a system ID here. We'll go ahead and give it an initial password. We'll do the same one, INITPASS. We'll also go ahead and give that a profile just to show you that the system actually takes roles and profiles, much the same as a dialog user. But keep in mind that the system ID is really a system-related and internal system processes ID. This allows you to create batch jobs and run those in the background. The main difference for this particular ID is that you're not able to log in as it. You can watch down here at the bottom of the screen, in this area right here, it will come up and say that you need to log on with the dialog user. Again, this is really utilized for administrators to create batch jobs that are going to run early in the morning or late at night and uh, make things happen in the background. A user would uh, maybe create a batch job and set it as their own ID. If that user ends up leaving uh, the company and you end up locking that ID, well guess what, that batch job's not gonna run later that night. So what you wanna do is set up batch IDs, uh, set them to system, and then set, set those batch uh, jobs to run under that particular batch ID. The next, next thing we'll talk about and the last thing we'll talk about is the service ID. The service ID is really an ID that is created for uh, a, a multitude of people to come in and help you troubleshoot your system. What you do is set this as a service ID and then you can set this password to anything that you want. In this case, we'll go ahead and set it to in at pass again, I-N-I-T-P-A-S-S. -S. And we'll go ahead and give this another profile of SAP all again, and it's something that we normally don't do is give SAP all to anybody, but in this particular case, we're just testing and showing you what the system will do. We'll go ahead and save this ID. Test three is set as a system ID, and you'll see that we can actually log in with this ID, but notice it doesn't force you to change the password. That's the beauty of this particular ID is that if you have a team that is unable to uh, troubleshoot and figure out exactly what's going on, another team member can just be given the password and, and not have to worry about that password having changed. Uh, so it gives you a really good, flexible way to be able to troubleshoot your system. So several different ways to log into your system uh, for your users, several different ways to keep it uh, working very smoothly for you. 
If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to drop us an email. Again, my name is Jim Armagas, and I'm with Nimble.